Welcome to Let's Plant Houses, the podcast where we talk about some incredible families' journeys. I'm your host, Wendy Ernson. So whether you're a parent, a caregiver, or you're simply someone seeking to understand more about this journey, you're in the right place. So today I have Kim here. So Kim, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. Yay. Um, I would love it if you could start by telling our listeners a little bit about your family. Okay. Uh, well, I am married to a wonderful, supportive husband, father, Dino, and I have an older son named Emilio. Mm -hmm. um, our special needs son, his name is Enzo, mm -hmm. and um, Emilio is 21, okay. Enzo is 19. So we've been on this journey for a little while. Um, two boys. Full life, I guess, you know. Right. And then, of course, you had the puppy, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, and the little puppy, yes, that keeps us in line. And what's his name? <laughs> Buddy. Oh, that's sweet. That's what you're multiple. <laughs> multiple, yes. <laughs> so, Enzo, so tell us a little bit more about him. And um, and I, I'm guessing part of this may start, this journey started when he was born? He was actually born perfectly healthy. Okay. Yeah, he was um, full term, you know, I always go through the same spiel every time we go to a new doctor. Yeah. Um, but perfectly healthy, yeah. you know, good APCAR score, everything was fine, took him home, nursed like normal, um, everything was fine. And then six months, went in for his checkup, got his um, shots, you know, his uh, whatever, I think five strains you get at six months old. Okay. Um, and like two weeks later, he spiked a super high fever and started shaking mm -hmm. after. And the shaking kind of didn't go away. And so we would go to doctors. They didn't know what the shaking, like they didn't have a word for it, a name. Um, and I was just kind of concerned. Like the only thing that really happened was, you know, that he got his vaccines. Right. So of course you kind of wonder, you know, you get that little tear sheet, every vaccine, you know, these things could happen. Um, but you don't really think those things happen. Of there are not. risks, of course, you know. Um, but he kept, you know, shaking, and we we didn't know what was going on. So nine months old, went in for you know the next checkup, next set of vaccines, and I asked the doctor again, like, you know, what are these movements, these yeah. shaking things that he's doing? No name, and I, you know, but we need to give him his vaccines. And I said, but something's going on with my kid, right. and you don't have a name for it. Um, I'm not comfortable, you know, so I had to leave the doctor because they weren't happy with that choice and uh, went to a doctor that was an MD but also treated with holistic care and she recommended waiting till we knew what was going on and I was more comfortable with that. So, um, I mean, I'm trying to think of our little timeline. I think it was closer to, um, I think, maybe 10 months. Okay. We noticed his eyes, they were dancing, mm -hmm. um, took him in to the eye doctor, eyes were perfectly healthy, um, nerves, everything were fine. And um, he said, you know, you might want to do a brain scan and look for a tumor, like a brain tumor could cause this. Wow. So we're like, okay, <laughs> like this is getting serious, you know. Yeah. Went in, um, saw a neurologist. We didn't find a tumor with an MRI, but we did find these symmetrical lesions in the pons area of his brain. And that was a detector of something called Lee's syndrome. Okay. So um, that's a mitochondrial disorder. And I still get goosebumps telling the story. Like yeah. here, 19 years later, you know. Um, but uh, we did genetic testing at that time. They didn't find any um, uh, evidence of this Lee syndrome, so I kind of was hoping maybe this isn't Lee syndrome. And I asked the doctor, well, if this isn't Lee syndrome, what, what is mean? it? Yeah. yeah. And he kind of just shrugged his shoulders and put his hands out, you know, <laughs> and he was like, I really don't know. And we're like, okay, great. Like, let me just take this baby home. And, you know, you think doctors know so much, and then all of a sudden they don't know anything, and you just are. You and you're already to, seeing these specialists, and yes. you're still not getting any answers. No answers, you know. So, um, so yeah, so we kind of continued this journey of thinking it's Lee syndrome, but not really knowing. Mm -hmm. um, they told us, you know, what to expect, which they, he, they gave him to your life expectancy oh at gosh. that time. So that was crazy. We went home from the hospital that day and everybody came over. Just, it kind of, it felt just as if he had already passed. Right. You know, like we just all, we sat around a table and we all just stared at each other. Like, what? We have to, we need to expect to lose him? Right. And watch him slowly decline for two years. Like, what? So, 
it was really crazy. Like our whole world, like everything stopped. Right. I, mean, I don't think my husband went to work for weeks and we couldn't stop crying. And you know, it was just a really, really crazy time. But you know, we had his beautiful big brown eyes staring at us and he was mm -hmm. still so sweet and loving and it was just really hard. And I think even at that time we had some photos scheduled and we had to take them to the studio for nine months, 10 months, maybe it was one year photos, I can't remember. But um, you know, we just felt like, are we documenting a life? You know, these photos are gonna be all that we have one day. It like, must have been so heartbreaking for it, you. It was crazy. Um, so his first birthday was crazy. We had a blowout party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, right. You're like, we're gonna go over the top because we wanna celebrate his life. Yes, we don't know how many we're gonna get. Like, right. we're gonna have a great party. And we did, we had a great party. Um, he made it to two. And we didn't see all these declines and setbacks that we had expected. He was different than the average. You know, he was failure to thrive. He had this nystagmus, this movement in his eyes. He had a shaky voice, so he was ataxic and had a shaky, ataxic voice. But, um, you know, spunky little dude. And, mm -hmm. you know, he never really walked. He walked across a room a couple of times. Um, but he was doing it. He was making it. And I think the most stressful part was not knowing, of course. And, um, you know, we just prayed for every day. So I think we really, like, dug into faith at that time because that's really all we had. We just begged God for a change, for miracles, for healing, for right. more time. Right. You know, so um, that was an interesting time in life. But we, um, you know, as time went on, we kept trying all the new um, genetic testings as they were becoming available because really there's not they don't really know enough about genes and about the you know and I actually am not great like I don't have the verbiage to really communicate but all of our genes haven't been discovered mm -hmm. and there's so much in our I don't know if they call it a genome or exome I forget what it's all called but you know they're still learning so the fact that they said to us they're like you know kind of looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, this is all we have. Like, we're just going to think that he has this syndrome even though he doesn't have any of the Lee's disease um, mutations that they have found so far. Um, we're just going to expect that this is what we have. But so here he's 19. So yeah. this is still the diagnosis, this is still the approach? This is still the approach. Wow. They still, yeah, we just recently in the last two years had the most recent testing done. And he has one copy of a gene that is um, found with Lee syndrome, mm -hmm. but you need two copies for a diagnosis. So he's not able to have like be a part of clinical trials. Um, he's, he doesn't qualify for anything because he doesn't have a diagnosis. <laughs> that must be really frustrating. It is. It but is. then again, it must be also really freeing because that also means he doesn't have a lot of the limitations that you just described that are associated with that. Well, um, it's not freeing because he's still a wheelchair bound child that's nonverbal with a feeding tube, mm. seizure disorder, you know, like we're still dealing with other things. All those things that are associated with Lee syndrome. Really what um, makes his prognosis maybe a little bit better. His doctors kind of say it's Lee-like and fluctuating. So sometimes he may present like a Lee syndrome mm -hmm. patient. Sometimes he may not present. So really for a Lee syndrome patient, you know, somebody that probably has a genetic mutation with two copies, um, every time that person gets sick, they risk their mitochondria not supporting their entire body. Okay. So for Enzo, he actually had a stroke once due to a stomach virus because his mitochondria, they were not able to protect his entire brain while his mitochondria were fighting that virus to, mm -hmm. you know, free him from that. So he had a stroke. He was a shell. His eyes blank, like he was not even there. You know, took him to the hospital. Um, and they, you know, they basically said he had a metabolic stroke, and that's when he lost his speech. He lost some function on the right side of his body. How old was he, did you five, say? Five. Oh, my Five gosh. years old, yeah. And so I think someone with Lee syndrome, they can um, 
just keep suffering for, with every sickness that they have, and they slowly decline with every illness, basically. But yet he doesn't qualify for any of the trials or treatments. <laughs> no, right. Wow. Right? I know it's bizarre. Um, but he's 19. He's only had one major metabolic stroke that we know of. That was when he was five. When he was five, okay. yeah. And so, um, you know, now he'll get a fever and get sick, and he basically can fight it on his own, mm -hmm. and he can handle it. But, I mean, you know, it's like Russian roulette. You don't really know what's going to happen right. with every sickness. But right. So you guys are pretty much like... I don't want to say on guard, but like just, yeah. you're, you're vigilant. We are very vigilant. He's been like the boy in the bubble for mm -hmm. many, many years. Now that he's past 18 and we've seen, you know, so many years go by that he was able, he's been able to handle these sicknesses, yeah. I do have more of a sense of freedom. You have, but some, you have some, you have more confidence that... He can fight it. Yeah. You know, but... Because you also want him to live. You want him to be doing some of the things he enjoys. And yes, and we, we don't want to see him decline. Right. But um, the first, like, you know, two decades of his life, I mean, I, can, I guess he's only 19. The first... You're, it's close enough. 12, <laughs> the first 12 years, we were really, really panicked about him getting sick because, you know, he made it to two. Okay, then the doctor says, okay, well, if he makes it to six, we'll see what happens. Oh. After six, let's make it to 10. Let's make it to 12. So I think the longer in duration that you kind of fight this disease, you know, your prognosis is probably better. So I guess I just have more of a sense of freedom now that he's past 18. But. That makes sense, too, because I got to believe that your body's developing, right? So in mm -hmm. those years that you're describing, and those are probably... Um, specific milestone years for physical development. Right. Mm -hmm. So then as you get older, you know, your body is the way it is. So it's mm -hmm. going to fight things the way it fights things. Hopefully. So, right. No, yeah, Hopefully. absolutely. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. But it was very stressful. I mean, like, I always hate to admit this and I pretend like there are a bunch of girlfriends in the room. But, uh, you know, every night of my life, I laid in bed picturing his funeral. Yes. Like, you know, and you, you don't want a life lived without purpose. So I would lay in bed just thinking, what, what did we learn? What would we share? What would we talk about if we lost him? You know, and that was so stressful. Like, I don't do that anymore. Right. And I challenged myself not to. I, it was probably an unhealthy behavior to do that. But it was myself probably preparing myself mentally. I don't know. But it's probably not the wisest thing to do. But I did end up with breast cancer. So... Okay. <laughs> I probably caused more stress to myself worrying about the unknown and about, you know, how to survive this crazy thing called life. Right. You know. But I don't know if, I hope that you don't fault yourself. I mean, breast cancer happens to one in four women, I think, right? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so it, let's just, you know. I know. There's so many people that, that it does happen to that Correct. you, I'd hate for you to blame yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I could have taken better care of myself. And I think as a caregiver, yeah. that's always a challenge. It is to very find challenging. that balance. That's so true. So I guess I think, you know, what could I have done better? Could I, you know, I should go to sleep before 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. I, I should, you know, I should have done things a little differently. So I do challenge all special needs moms, like, yeah, take care of yourself. Yeah. Call grandma, call mom, like even it's for, if it's for two, three hours, yeah. you know, once a week, that's just, you need that time, well, even in small increments. I totally agree with you. And one yeah. thing I've shared with other families um, is that um, sometimes, so, you know, with our daughter, we talk, we, we, I've always talked about her on the show, but, yeah. you know, we had po points of time where she became really difficult for even a caregiver who's mm -hmm. a professional to even to care for her because mm -hmm. um, she would just have her outbursts. But the reason I say this is because then as the, as the parent, um, describe to your friends how they can help you because maybe they can't take your child, yes. but they can do your laundry or they can make you dinner or mm -hmm. they can, um, you know, they could do things to support you so you mm -hmm. can support your child. Right. So, um, so if you don't have someone that can actually care for them because the level of care is just too great, right. can they do things for you? Right. Yeah, because and, that, and we got to advocate for ourselves as, right. instead of just advocating for our kids. Right. I do think, though, what you said, really spelling it out for your friends and yes, family. Yes, because they don't know. They really don't know because I've had so many friends. And they want to. They do want to, but yeah. they don't know how to. And so uh, I've had so many conversations with girlfriends. Like, you know, I always challenge them. I know you want them to know what it's like to live in your house, 
But they have no clue. No. They have no clue. And until you really do spell it out and just say X, Y, and Z, they will not know. You right. Know, so, uh, the, oh, I'm talking, touching my microphone, sorry. <laughs> You're um, fine. <laughs> uh, but I actually have always wanted to start like this little foundation. Yeah. Um, and I have always wanted to call it Grandma B in honor of um, my friend's mom that would, she would come over once a week for like four hours and just sit on the couch and <sighs> read Enzo stories out of the goodness of her and heart. And you're like, C I can shower, I can take yeah. a nap, I can make dinner, and I can just do that thing. Whatever yeah. that thing is, I can read a book. Yes. Yeah. It was amazing. That's a and blessing. And she was so selfless just to come over and do that once a week for me. I love Grandma P. Right? Yes. And that'd be so cool. We should all have a Grandma B in our life. Right? Yes. And maybe I mean, we should be the Grandma Bs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly. It's such a gift. So um, people don't know how to help and they do want to be told, I think, you know. So you were talking about this foundation though. So the Grandma B Foundation, what would that look like? Um, oh, well, goodness, I haven't thought about this in so long, well, but just, it's always been in the back of my head. Sure. But, you know, people who want, that, that have like five hours a week that they could volunteer with a family. Yep. Um, they could just be in like this data bank and you know, people apply, you know, families yeah. apply and I could match up grandma bees <laughs> with, yeah. with families. And you know, some people are willing and they're not afraid and willing to learn. And you know, there are people out there that want to volunteer. So maybe someday I'll do that. I, I mean, love that idea. Right? Yes. She was an inspiration to me, and this was out of the goodness of her heart. Like, she called me, hey, I have a few hours a week. You want me to come sit with Enzo? Like, yes, yeah. I love you. Exactly. <laughs> I will do anything. I will, yeah, whatever you need, we'll yes. take care of you too. Very special time. And special time for me just to get to know her better as well. Yeah. You know? Like, it's better for all of us. Even more interaction for the whole family. Yeah, you know? because you also don't want any of you to become isolated. Right. Right? So you want an opportunity for all of you to ha like have the energy to mm -hmm. do other things right. besides just those things right. that you have to do. Right. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. So clearly your life changed after um, Enzo was born and started to have more of these complications. Mm -hmm. um, and you described some of what your, the day in your life was like with your family then. Mm -hmm. What supports did help you as he grew up? Obviously, Grandma V is one of them. Right, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom has always been mm -hmm. there for me anytime I needed her, Yeah. you know. So um, we've had family members come over, you know, mm -hmm. nieces come and hang out. I mean, things are changing now that Enzo's older. He's mm -hmm. 19, he's bigger. He's incontinent, you know, he has to be lifted onto his handicap accessible bed. Yep. It's like he still doesn't qualify for nursing care. But which is which is wild. Which is wild. Um, but, you know, not everybody can care for him. You right. know, he's got a seizure disorder. So whoever works with him, they need to be able to, you know, be on the lookout for seizures, be able to administer a rescue med. So his care's gotten more complicated as it he's has. gotten older. It has, yeah. yeah. So we try to find caregivers that can help us so that we can have some freedoms, mm -hmm. um, especially after my breast cancer. My husband and I looked at each other like, okay, yeah. we need to do things differently. We yeah. need to go out on dates. We need to, you know, spend time with our older son that was on the back burner for the majority of his childhood, yep. you know, so we um, we now have some more caregivers coming into the house, and we try to spend more time with the older son now that he's 21, and you know, probably doesn't really want to be with us, but we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that goes with pretty much any 21 year old. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's not unique in that way. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so um, we 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 are trying to get more help. Like yeah, that's really what it takes. Yeah, because you, I, and I, I say this often, it's like we truly need a village it's so to true. help us. It's so true. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and just like you described, I think that as a lot of these kids become adults, mm -hmm. their needs are more complicated, mm -hmm. whether it be the care that you're describing, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the um, physical care, mm -hmm. but there could also be a lot of mental care because I'm sure you, you may or may not have had this experience with Enzo, but once they're out of the school system, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of that structure, that community mm -hmm. goes to the wayside. Yeah. It's like they call it the cliff. 
Well, we never had that. And so, so he never, he couldn't go to school because of his illness. Yes, because he's the boy in the oh, bubble. He yeah. never went to school. Okay. So we've, he's always been homebound. We've always had, like, you know, the care, or the teachers will come into the home. Mm -hmm. We'll let them come into the home, like, in the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, once kids start getting sick. Yeah, you know, that's October, right? Like, yeah. it's like, yeah, the first week of October till like, well, until the spring. <laughs> right. On and off, right? Yeah, so Enzo gets like a few weeks on either end of the school year. Um, but the teachers will, you know, they'll um, not FaceTime. Zoom yeah, like Zoom, or, Zoom. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, you know, I was kind of laughing. During COVID, people started living like we had been living yeah. for a long time. And so now we have more resources, you know, these doctor's visits, you know. I mean, telehealth, I mean, amazing. I was going to say, yeah, for COVID, that probably opened up a lot of resources for you guys. It really did. It was Because before, like, helpful. no, we can't do that. Now they're like, oh, we actually, yeah, we, we kind of still offer that now after COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you should be offering this to people. Yes, yeah. for sure. So yeah, as soon as COVID hit and everyone's freaking out, I'm like, you guys, this is great. This is no big deal. <laughs> right. We've been doing this for a long time. Right. Yeah, but now we wear the masks. Like, I kind of, I would have felt uncomfortable wearing the masks, like, you know, a long time ago before COVID. Now I don't feel bad. Like, I'm protecting my son. And That's right. And we're doing what we need to do. And I, you know, don't look so cuckoo doing it. <laughs> right, because so many people are doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's normalized a lot of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which has been great for us. Yeah. I hadn't even considered, and of course you probably would have gotten a lot of support from organizations or nonprofits because again, you wouldn't want to be taking Enzo to those places, Correct. nor bringing those folks into the home. Correct. Wow, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that is really challenging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, our winters, like, we've even, um, like, we had a cottage, um, and I would go stay there in the wintertime mm -hmm. with Enzo, and my husband would stay home and go, you know, take our older son to school, go to work. He kind of managed the older son. I managed our younger son, and we kind of lived separately during flu season. Definitely every winter for 12 weeks during flu season, wow. we lived separately. And that's because, obviously, you wanted your other child to have um, mm -hmm. a we'll say a typical experience, mm -hmm. right? Going to high school, meeting people, mm -hmm. going to prom, I mean, whatever the things are, being around a bunch of people. Right. Okay. Yeah, an interesting life, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like, um, I mean, it sounds like you guys were able to figure that out though, which is hard, it's, it's been, really hard. It's been interesting, but my husband, he's pretty incredible. Like he is a problem solver, mm -hmm. so he will stew on something until he really has it figured out. He's the incredible one. Well, I, it sounds like a partnership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I commend him, though. He's really, and he, really... And no doubt he should be commended, yeah. but it's a team. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but us moms, you know, we're completely selfless. So. <laughs> we are, but, you know, it's one thing to be selfless. It's another thing to be self-sacrificing. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like walking that mm -hmm. line. Because you can step over... Not, Again, this is the general you. This is a not specific right, you, right. of course. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we as moms have to be careful of that, right? Because you know, then because 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 let's be honest, if we don't put our oxygen mask on, right. we can't do that for our kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Um, so maybe you've already described this, but I, I sometimes like to ask this question. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say was one of your plan a house moments when you as a parent had to make the impossible possible for Enzo? You know, I was thinking about this question. Yeah, and because um, you knew it was coming. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a hard one. I don't know, but because there's probably been so many. Probably, I'll, I I can share the most recent. Okay. So um, this past February, Enzo was hospitalized for two weeks, and. Um, I, uh, we went in with these myoclonic episodes, which myoclonus is basically a muscle movement, but okay. he would have these, um, they look like seizures, but they weren't seizures. It wasn't How would you know brain. that they were seizures? Was it just like the physical symptoms when he would exhibit things? He was completely awake and aware of what was going on. Okay. And like these seizure-like episodes, they weren't ending. Okay. It was like constant. Like is it something you physically see him do so you know yes. he's having, okay, so it's not like he's being monitored so you can see it or? Well, so we went into the hospital to be monitored and try and figure out oh. what was going on. Okay. Um, and so we were in the hospital for two weeks with these horrible episodes, just exhausting to him, his body, his yeah. muscles, like 
scared, not knowing what the heck was going on. But we were in there for two weeks. We did every test. We, you know, did the EEG for, I don't know, five days trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and uh, they were going to release us after two weeks, like release us exactly like we went into the hospital. Right. And you're like, I came in here with this situation. We're not, we're not coming out of here yeah. until we have, we have an idea right. what to do next. And we were in Florida because it was winter. We were hiding yeah. out from all the germs. And um, luckily, my husband's cousin, who's a doctor, she called me and we're talking. We're trying to figure things out. Right. And she said to me, Kim, what does your gut tell you? Because you've been doing this longer than anybody else. Right, right. Right? Right, but you're relying on your doctors to figure things out. But you're out, almost like, like the quarterback now. Yes. Because you've probably seen so many specialists and you've been through so many things with yeah. themselves, but right? But this was something completely new. Fair. So at yeah. 19, something completely, well, 18, completely new. So, um, and of course, we weren't near our specialists. You know, we'd take them to the Cleveland Clinic for his care. Um, so these were all new doctors. They didn't know him, and we're trying to figure this out. But anyway... Her comment really challenged me. Um, what what does your gut tell you? And really, Enzo has this baclofen pump. It's a pump inside his body that mm -hmm. you know delivers medicine into his spine to okay. relax his muscles. Well, we had gotten a fill of the medication while we were in Florida, and I told her, I'm like, the only thing that has changed is this baclofen. Uh -huh. Well called the, the doctor that gave us the baclofen. It was a compound. It wasn't brand name. And so... So it's the filler, like it's the that 22% that can be different than the drug. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? with the, the just whatever is, is different about it. So I called them. They're like, ma'am, it's the exact same thing. I promise you, this is not causing the problem. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, I have to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you thousands. I, I don't owe care. it to my son. You need to take this medicine out of his body. I want you to order the brand name. Yep. Like I had to fight for this. They were all treating me like, like I was crazy. You yep. know, these doctors are like. Because it's a generic versus a brand name, right? Right. Yep. But, they, like, but this is the only thing that changed. So we left the hospital. The next day, we withdrew the medicine, put in the new stuff. The myoclonic episodes, they stopped in severity. We're still dealing with something now, like it caused a slew of problems. So here it's been many months, and we're still dealing with the tidal wave from this problem. But at least he's, he doesn't need hospitalization, and he's not dealing with this intensity that he was before. But, you know, I think but that... But you had to fight for that. I had to fight for it. And that's not in my nature... Yeah. But, you know, of course, your children, you know, that can come out on you very easily. But I just think, you know, follow your gut. Yes. It was such a big moment for me. Like, you know, just when you think everybody knows more than you, you know, you know follow your gut. You, you have to really just dig deep and, you know, listen to your inner voice, even though, you know, just listen to your inner voice. <laughs> Yeah, it was, that is, it was really hard. That's that's amazing, though, you were able to at least get, you know, to, by doing that, by advocating in that way, it sounds like, you know, you're getting toward, are closer to a solution yeah. or resolution. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. amazing. It was great. I'm very um, grateful. That did happen to my daughter. Not the same experience, really? but she, yes, it was a generic versus um, whatever, generic versus a name brand, yeah. and we had a horrific uh, experience. It was behavior and an, and an allergy and a whole bunch of things that came with it. Yeah. And um, not what you're describing, though. I think yours sounded even more severe. Um, but yet, they didn't believe us, and we had to do the thing, and we paid for the different one. And, um, and then they realized that, oh, I see that it all went away. And we're like, yes. Mm -hmm. We're like, because I don't remember what the percentage is, but something like 70 something percent of it is the drug, mm -hmm. but then the other 22. There's some variation between all the drugs, like that you can you can put different fillers, different colors, different stuff, mm -hmm. and so that variation can not yeah. always, mm -hmm. but could affect someone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's. I'm sorry that that was your experience, mm -hmm. but I'm glad that you were able to advocate for him. Yeah, I'm grateful. So um, for our last question today, um, so I guess for families new on this journey, mm -hmm. what advice might you give them? Follow your gut. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, I know, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the hardest thing for me in the beginning, I don't know why I thought maybe life was just a big fairy tale and everything <laughs> was just going to be great, <laughs> you know, and there weren't going to be challenges. But um, 
there's a little motto that I have in my head. Of course, if I'm shoot, shooting for, you know, perfect, you know, we always want everything as perfect as it can be, but sometimes it is what it is. Right. And um, That's so true. Yeah. So like when I'm in one of those situations where we don't have answers and we don't have verbiage, like, you know, we just, we have all these questions and they're unanswered really I've had to go back to like that it is what it is kind of situation and let's make the best of it today right now of course you always want to keep fighting for answers but um, I think that brings a little sense of peace and um, acceptance for where you are in that moment and uh, that's a that was a big one for me that's the word that came to mind when you were describing it was acceptance mm -hmm. And it is one of the hardest things to do because you feel mm -hmm. like you always have to be fighting, but you're so right. Yeah. Because sometimes there is time where you just have to enjoy that moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's um. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Goosebump moment. Yeah, it right. was a goosebump yeah. moment for me yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. Um, well, thank you again so much for coming on the show today, Kim. Um, I I know that others will find this inspirational, and. Um, yeah, I just love I love what you guys are doing and the you know everything you guys are doing to support Enzo and, and like su your, the suggestions you're saying to support yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have to talk about Grandma B another time for right. sure. I love that right. idea. Right. Um, and those and for those of you listening in today, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I also hope you will consider subscribing, leaving a review, or sharing this podcast with others who may find it meaningful. So join us next time on Let's Plant Houses. Take care. <laughs>